How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So recently I did a video on my 3D Printing 101 series on infill and what infill settings mean for your 3D print. And in that video, I showed an image of a print I'd done with multiple infills in the same print. So each cube had a different amount of infill. And a lot of you asked me how I did it. And that's a fair question because it's not something that you can usually do on most slicing programs. I actually use Simplify 3D to do it. And I use the really powerful processes approach to Simplify 3D users to make these multiple infills in the same print. So in today's video, I'll show you how I did it. All right, so first to start, you're gonna need your objects. So let's go to file and my most recent one would be the 20 millimeter cube. I designed this ages ago for my top three first 3D prints you should do. It's literally just a cube with some slightly rounded edges, nothing special at all. So we're going to want multiples if you're gonna do multiple infill settings. So in my uh, video before I did six, so to do that, we'll just go to edit and duplicate and we want five copies, which leads us to six cubes and center and arrange. So they're nice and arranged in the center there. So how this works is this file's gonna go from this single process here you can see that the infill percentage is 5%. So that's great. And under select models, it's selecting all the cubes. So if I go to prepare to print, it's going to make them all with the 5% infill. You might be wondering why there's no top infill. And that's a very good question as well. So if we go back to our process under the layers option, in Simplify 3D, it calls its uh, the top fill, the top solid layers, and you can set that to any number you like. Usually three is a good standard, so you want three bottom, three side, and three top. In this case, you can see here, I've turned it off. So zero top solid layers means it'll just print all the way to the top within fill. And the cool thing about this is it will calculate the exact size of your shape. So it won't stop short of uh, 20 millimeters. It will go all the way to 20, but it'll just have no uh, top fill, which is great. So let's do that and prepare to print. And that's what we'd get. But what if you wanted to demonstrate multiple infills or what if you wanted to test different settings in the same print? Well, we can do that using multiple processes. So choose the process and you literally control paste, 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 paste. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got our multiple processes and our multiple objects. Awesome. So all we need to do is assign each model to its own process. And this is pretty important. So you can assign any number of models to a process, but you can't assign the same model to multiple processes unless you're doing some really tricky stuff. So if you're just starting out with this, keep in mind you only want one process assigned to whatever model, not two. But we'll go into more advanced things where you can use multiple processes for the same model in a different video. So I'm gonna select this first one here. And Renaming them does help, so maybe just call it one and two. Actually, I'm gonna do it like this. So they're already nicely ordered, so I want it to go from sparse infill to dense infill in a nice order, so I'm gonna call this one one. Yep, doesn't like me doing that. Yep. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Six. Right, so they'll be in a nice order when we do them and uh, don't rearrange them, otherwise you'll have to do that again. Okay, so let's go to our first infill setting. So that's five infill, set at 5%. You could change any other settings you want, really, but we just want to change our infills. Select models. This is the most important thing. So you want to assign the model to it and we want to assign one to it. Okay, done. Next one. And this is, we can call this one 10 infill. So infill, set that at 10%. And oh, assign it to two. Alrighty. And you should be getting the picture by now. So all we're gonna do is just name them so we know what we're talking about. Change the settings we want, 20. And select the model we want, three. And we go through till we're done. And finally, the most dense, which would be 80%, which is very dense infill. Very rarely would you print with 80%, but we're gonna demonstrate it anyway. All right, cool, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to do prepare to print, and this is when a new menu pops up. So this only pops up when you've got multiple processes and it's important to read what it says. So it says, what processes do you want to assign to the slicing for using for this print? And you can select some of them or all of them or none of them. I don't know why you do none. But we want to select all, we want to do all of them. And then the next option is extremely important. Do you want to print continuously, layer by layer, or do you want to print sequentially, 
object uh, by object. So some printers, if they're big enough and the print head has enough clearance, you can actually print object by object. You could print a cube there, then a little bit over, cube, cube, cube. The advantage of that is it prints faster than layer by layer on all of them. And if the filament runs out, you'll only lose one cube instead of all of them at a certain height. That's the advantage. The disadvantage is you need a big print bed with a lot of clearance around the print head, otherwise you'll get collisions and it only works for some objects. So in this case, I want to do continuous layer by layer because they're quite close together and it will print them all at the same time, uh, layer by layer. Cool, so that's good and okay. And there we have it. So here are our infill settings from five all the way up to 80. Beautifully laid out so we can print them all at the same time to demonstrate infill settings. And the really cool thing about this is once you start playing around with processes, you can start changing other things. For example, with this 10% one, what if we wanted maybe six, six outside uh, outlines or perimeters or shells? Or what about this one? What if we wanted a different type of infill? What about, I don't know, wiggle? Let's go that. And what about this one? Maybe we want a fast honeycomb. Where's that one? Infill, fast honeycomb. You can even assign different layer heights to the same print. So with this 60% one, we could assign 0.1, maybe, layer heights. And we could assign, because it's 0.1, we could do a sparse infill. So that means the infill will be at like a 0.2 height, but it only prints every second layer, so it's faster. And you can experiment, stuff like that. So if we go to prepare, print, select all, and you can have just a crazy array of different settings in the same print. And to the best of my knowledge, no other slicing program lets you do this. So if you do know of one, let me know in the comments. This is more like a cam approach that I'd be familiar with, something that's like used in machining rather than a slicing program for 3D printing. But definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear it. So there you go, guys. I hope this clears up how I did those multiple infills in that print for my previous 3D Printing 101 video on infill settings. And if you have any other like technical questions that you want answered, just shoot them through to me. And if I like them and if I have time for them, I'll make a video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, stuff like this, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually blocked in space.